Hey everybody, it's Emily, the Crazy Worm Lady. I'm here today, we're gonna put an end to the neglect experiment, the 103 days of neglect that we left a bin of blue worms and a blin, a blin, a bin of European night crawlers for 103 days. We didn't feed them, didn't add bedding, water, nothing like that to see how they would do. And, and we saw that they did relatively well. The only thing we noticed was maybe a slight size decrease that uh, they need to rebound a little bit. But we've been giving them some blended food for a few weeks here. I harvested the castings and these are the blue worms. Gave them a big blended feeding last week. They're just flying through it. And I figured I wanted to start some new experiments. So um, I was kind of intrigued lately there was been have been some discussions about uh coffee being bad for reproduction kind of slowing down worm reproduction but i've also seen a few series that people have done on coffee only bins that might even be a red in the mix um and so for that reason i decided i wanted to try it for myself so more of on a bin using only regular you know cardboard newspaper bedding and coffee is the only food source for the worms. So you can see, actually, I think that might be a cocoon right there. But these blue worms are doing great. Um, they might not rebound in size much more than this. They're not a very large worm to begin with, but they definitely look larger than when we first got them out of their neglect phase. So what I have is a, a large bin that I've set up. So I've set up just a large bin that we're going to put some starter bedding in. I got some shredded uh, cardboard today. We're gonna moisten it down. We're gonna add our blue worms. And the hopes for this is to see if I see a noticeable difference, you guys see a noticeable difference in how the worms do when they're just being fed coffee. Some people say it might discourage reproduction a bit because of the caffeine. I think it's all a theoretical type thing. I don't know that there's any science behind it, but it's kind of what I enjoy doing is kind of testing these theories and seeing exactly what we find. See these just telltale blue worm signs. They move so fast. Looks like there's a few reds and euros might have even gotten mixed in here, which I can take care of later. But the worms are thriving. So I'm going to jump over to the regular new bin that these guys are going to be rehoused into and we'll get the bedding all set up and then we will add these guys to their new home with some coffee. Okay, so if you guys missed my video the other day, the worm bin basics, the first video, um, I showed up, I showed how I set up um, new bins, but I'm not going to go through the entire setup today with this one. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I'm not even going to put a lid on this been wow that created a lot of dust um because blue worms tend to be climbers in general especially with rain and things like that so this bin is literally just a regular old tote no lid this is exactly what it is i'm not doing anything special to it no drainage holes nothing like that but i will link um my video in the the card at the top here so you can see um if you would want to start a bin with a lid and everything like that, how I do it. The next thing I'm going to add is just a nice sprinkling of my dry mix. Again, we're going to create a lot of dust. I'm going to do two scoopfuls of that. And now I'm going to get some water and moisten this down and make sure that we get it like a wrung out sponge. Okay, so I just added some water until I got it to the point, this is even a little bit too wet, but that's okay, and I'll explain why in a minute. Because really, when you pick it up and you squeeze, you only want to get a drop or two. This is, I can get quite a bit out of it. But this cardboard still has a ways to go to absorb it all. And the compost that these worms are in will be able to absorb a lot of moisture as well. There's not massive standing amounts of liquid. That's really the huge indicator of a problem, is if you're having tons of water pooling in the bottom. So I'm not going to worry about possibly being a little bit too wet. Also, without this having a lid, um, it won't get anaerobic. There will be a lot of airflow, and this should regulate itself in a day or two. 
But if you were start, starting brand new, I would encourage you to try to get the moisture right uh, before you add any worms, especially if they're not established and they aren't used to, um, you know, the, the material you're going to have them in as far as bedding and things like that. So I'm just going to start taking handfuls of our worms here and add them to their new home. The benefit of these guys being in some finished compost with some food that they're already working on is the, mic the microbes, the microbial life in here is going to be high. So the worms will feel comfortable. It's a familiar environment and those microbes will help start breaking things down in a fast manner so that um, the bin doesn't take a long time to really kind of take off and start doing what we want it to do, composting. So I'm going to add the rest of these worms in here. We'll take a final peek at them and we will add the coffee and get this underway. All right, guys, so everything is added in here. I put it directly on top of that cardboard that we put down here. So it'll all mix together. The worms will be, I think they'll be quite happy in here. But I wanted to hollow out an area in the middle where we're going to give them their first feeding of coffee. You can see there's a lot more material. Um, than it looked like in that mortar tray. That's why I didn't feel the need to add a ton of bedding right off the bat, because I'm also gonna to top it with some bedding. But, got some coffee grounds here. Blue worms are pretty voracious. I don't want to be overly ambitious and put the bin in trouble, but I think three, three filters and coffee should be should be good. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be too much for them by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm going to use these uh, filters actually to cover up the coffee. I'm going to show you something really quick though. I'm going to zoom in and see if I can get my camera to focus. Do you hear that? That's a very gritty sound that coffee makes. And a lot of people ask, how do you tell the difference between castings and coffee? But if you run your finger through castings, it's this soft, um, flaky, fluffy kind of texture. And it's definitely noticeably gritty when your hand runs through coffee. So I just thought I would mention that. I will add a little bit more of my dry mix just because you, especially with coffee, you want to make sure you have plenty of buffer for your pH control. It has some trace minerals in there with the neem cake and kelp meal. All the good stuff that I like to put in here, and you can see what those ingredients are. Um, I always list them in the description below. You don't have to buy any of them um, at all for your worms. It's just something that I've chosen to do and had good success at keeping pests down, things like that. So um, I just covered that back up with a little bit of the castings and that blended food they've been working on. And I'm going to top it. I see a little fruit fly as I'm talking about controlling pests. Top it with just a thin layer of dried cardboard because this will absorb excess moisture and also deter any sort of pest from coming in here, especially since we're not going to have a lid on this, but literally it's not even an inch. You can see through it in most places. Um, and I can come back and add more if I feel the need to. But what I do to hold in moisture in bins that I don't put lids on is I use a sheet of bubble wrap. So this is like the bubble, the bevel side down. And I always put that down, it helps to uh, allow aeration. I don't cut it perfectly. I'm, I'm not, um, you know, that specific about it. I want there to be room for air to get in around the edges. This is just more a way to hold in moisture. So as it evaporates, as things heat up, as they decompose, that it doesn't dry out, especially with coffee, which tends to like to dry out anyway. So this is a brand new experiment, guys. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, be eager to see how it goes in comparison to the one other rather you know, long-term uh, experiment I saw from Newell Davis at uh, World Composting when he did a coffee bin. So I'll be interested to see how mine does in comparison. This is a little less scientific than what I usually do. I'm not doing it next to a control group, but I just want to see if we notice anything different from any of the other systems that I run, does this system, you know, get stagnant, have issues, do we not see a lot of cocoons, all of those types of things, and kind of gain our own um, knowledge on it along the way. So, that being said, I'm rambling, so I appreciate you guys stopping by today. Let me know what you think.
drop those comments below. Like this video. Subscribe if you'd like some more content from me. Click that bell for notifications so you know when I post a video. And I'll be back with you guys real soon for an update. Have a great night.